we are considering incompressible flow here. So we have divergence of u equal to what? Zero. zero. And how about divergence of ui? Zero, right? Okay. So how about the divergence of the defect, which I consider as ui minus u, the difference between the inviscid velocity and viscous velocity? Again, equal to zero, right? The divergence is a linear operator, so the equation satisfies the principle of superposition. Okay, so now what's left is basically considering the same control volume I had before, right? Okay, and I know that when I integrate from uh, from zero y equal to zero to ue the edge of the boundary layer or I can just integrate to infinity right integrate over to infinity ui minus u so this is the this is the flux at the left uh, I want to say this is uh, times a negative sign because I want to take the take the outward going flux of this right so so what I want to do is uh, I want to say if I integrate the whole thing over this control volume Omega this is also equal to zero and uh, how can I change this integral volume integral of a divergence into surface integrals the Stokes. Uh, not quite the Stokes Huh? The, other one. the other one, right. <laughs> Let's use the other one to transform this to the surface flux. By the way, the other one is called the divergence theorem or Gauss's theorem. So this is uh, uh, times dy. So this is uh, the flux going outside towards the left plus the flux going outside towards the right. So this is at x1. This is ui minus u dy at x2. And we also have the outward flux towards the bottom, right? And the outward flux towards the bottom is the integration from x1 to x2 of minus ui minus u, right? Oh, minus vi minus v. So this is the this is the y directional velocity times dx at y equal to zero. And by the way, when y equal to zero, what is v? It's zero, so we can get rid of this at y equal to zero. And then plus integration from x1 to x2, positive of vi minus v dx at y equal to infinity, which is very large. Now, what is this term at y equal to infinity? Yeah. Y is zero? Because that's right. By the definition of the inviscid equivalent velocity, vi should be equal to v outside the boundary layer. So this whole thing is also gone. So let's collect what is left. By collecting what is left, we basically got integration of ui minus u dy the difference between uh, x2 and x1 right this is this is this is equal to an integration x1 x2 of vi dx right at y equal to zero at y equal to zero yes oops okay um, can you explain yes. your sign convention? Why, why it's minus one and plus one and Yeah, because I'm looking at, if you use divergence theorem, you are going to uh, equ equate the integral of a divergence to the integral over the surface of the outward going flux. Oh. Right? Okay, that is why 
when I'm integrating towards the left boundary, because the velocity goes in, yeah. I have a negative sign. Right. When I'm integrating the right boundary, because the velocity goes out, I have a positive sign. The same thing happens for the bottom and, and, and top. For top, uh, positive V goes out, so I have positive. For the bottom, positive V means goes in, so I have a negative sign. All right. All right, okay, now this has to be true for any x1 and x2, right? Right? Mass conservation. So I can take x2 to be x1 plus some infinitesimal distance. And then this integral formulation in x, right? I'm not taking difference in y. The integral, the integral in x becomes just a vi, right? Taking taking x2 is equal to x plus dx, x1 equal to x. So this whole thing becomes vi times dx, vi at x times dx. This is y equal to 0. I'm trying to derive, you can see, I'm trying to derive a boundary condition for vi, right? And the left is the difference between two infinitesimal axes. So it's basically d integral over y, right? So if I move this dx to here, it's d dx of the integral in y is equal to vi. This is the first integral relationship we derived. And this can be also seen as a kind of motivation for the integral method, for why we introduce the implicit equivalent flow. Because we said that in order for me to be a derived equation that is insensitive to the definition of the edge of the boundary layer, we want to look at the difference between the edge velocity and the viscous boundary layer velocity flow field. Okay, and through this mass conservation, we basically know that we can define such a integral quantity of the defect such that the x derivative of it is actually equal to the y boundary condition to the one normal component of the invis uh, of the inviscous equivalent flow, right? So if I define this to be, let's say, m, then I know that vi at y equal to 0 is equal to dm dx. And m basically quantifies how much defect is in the mass flow of the boundary layer. 